good morning in this video we will be discussing regarding the firearms the classification and uh, followed by the types of bullets and uh, various terminologies that a candidate should know and uh, for the better reading and followed by um, medical legal importance of each of the thing and uh, firearm is a uh, any instrument which discharges a missile by the expensive forces of gases produced by burning of the explosive material so whenever a trick can be pulled the mechanism behind and what are the changes that happens within the gun and after which the bullet or the pellet which leaves as the muzzle end of the firearm and here in point of concentration where in we uh, we have these terminologies like internal ballistics external and followed by Uh, terminal followed by wound ballistics and forensic ballistics and here our point of concentration is more towards these three right the terminal ballistics wound and forensic ballistics or uh, entirely all three are relatively same but in context to it there there are some minor differences and here internal ballistics is when a trigger been pulled what are the changes that happens within a gun and uh, the mechanism behind it and uh, what are the mod modification that happens and uh, what are the mechanism by which a bullet leaves the uh, the muzzle end of the firearm and uh, here what happens between the muzzle end of the firearm and the victim or the person who is about to receive a, a bullet wound and in due course right in between right the modifying factors could be an air and the velocity of the bullet that leaves and what are the intervening object that it strikes all those things have been studied under external ballistics and followed by we come to these three right and relatively our most important uh, in uh, context to a medical practitioner is wound ballistics what has happened and what were the injuries present and out of which which has been fatal and what are other uh, body surfaces is that the bullet has injured and uh, these are our points of concentration if a, a victim is alive we are going to treat him and if he has expired uh, on the instant we will discover what, uh, what are the types of the firearm used uh, what was the number of rounds have been fired what are other vital structure been damaged etc and in detailing in our autopsy report and the forensic uh, ballistics is uh, uh, relatively almost a similar term but here in concern wherein if a if a gun has been missing from the scene of crime and there is no any relative evidence uh, found from scene of crime and they as a part of the investigation uh, wherein the material that's been, that that has been dispersed in scene of crime if possible if been detected those will be collected or pure and pure and pure from our autopsy report police will start the uh, uh, rest of the investigation and in other terms for example wherein an accused been already been fixed or accused uh, who uh, accused or a suspect who has been under question will be subjected for uh, the questionnaire procedure or uh, the inquiry procedure under if position wherein a gun been recovered uh, the police will try to fix out whether this matches with this matches with the victim or is there been any some other gun involved etc so the entire part of the investigation is uh, dealing with the term forensic ballistics and uh, in simpler terms in the simpler context our focus uh, pure and pure is on the victim as a rmp and we least bother about what has happened here right what has happened here we are least bother we are only concerned with the wound and other associated changes that has happened within the body of the deceased or the victim and here in simpler terms internal ballistics is also called as proximal ballistics where in external ballistics is also called as intermediate ballistics and uh, this is the muzzle end of the firearm once once a bullet has left the changes that happen here or the changes that has been uh, happening here all in context is related to intermediate ballistics or the external ballistics and once the bullet has hit the individual and uh, what are the other changes that happens here those are concerned with terminal ballistics or otherwise we can also use the word wound ballistics
in the coming to this slide wherein at the end of the autopsy right at the end of the autopsy a medical officer should able to should able to comment on these questions you should able to answer these types of questions first and foremost question is whether the injury is caused by a, a rifle or a smooth bore firearm and uh, since the next second point will be what is the nature of the projectile and followed by the nature of the propellant and the direction of firing and what is the range of firing and the direction again by uh, looking out of the, the wound and the tracing out the track of the wound we can able to fix out the direction of the firing and also this is by morphological autopsy or otherwise we can also subject the individual for x-rays both AP view and lateral view and we can comment on the direction of the firing and the range firing it is based on the entry wound the description that are present over the entry wound uh, for example factor A is present so this could be the range of firing factor B is present this could be the range of firing etc like that so what is the range right so accused with victim right this area right what is the distance actual distance this this indicates the range of firing so followed by these are the five questions we need to answer at the end of the autopsy and followed by if it been in case of a other autopsical uh, autopsy procedures and followed by recovery of bullets and those need to be done and uh, followed by in next slide the classification classification of firearm the first and foremost factor by which a firearm can be classified is based on the condition of the barrel and uh, here the terminologies used are the rifled firearm or smooth bore firearm rifled or smooth bore firearm so here in case rifle is rifling is present so it means that it has lands and grooves depressions elevations are present in rifled firearm and smooth bore firearm it is as smooth there is no any depression elevation etc the entire area has been completely smooth there is no rifling at all based on the manufacturing processes uh, the firearm can be uh, classified as factory made country made and unorthodox guns wherein unorthodox guns means example could be a pen gun or an umbrella gun etc wherein there is no any specification in manufacturing and other and when you com uh, compare to the factory made and country made and same similar country made there is no any standard uh, protocol being followed wherein the the manufacturer may makes a 10 gun the 10 guns uh, 10 or 15 guns wherein each gun exhibits a, a unique pattern there is no any uh, uh, there is no any uh, different uh, there is no any constant feature that is being present each gun have behaves in a uh, in a unique way by which we give, there is a, a difficulty arises and in a factory gun wherein a factory made or a factory gun wherein standard specification for example the barrel is 10 centimeter a country a, a, a manufacturer produces where all guns of 10 centimeter will be present and uh, each uh, each gun that has been manufactured by the individual or by the uh, by the company has a standard specification there is no any variation even if produces 100 or 1000 guns and uh, based on the third category muscle velocity of the projectile right so muscle velocity is nothing but the muscle end right muscle end is the a terminal portion by which at uh, which a bullet leaves and uh, here based on the muscle velocity the the, uh, the bullet uh, whether it uh, leaves at a lower phase or a medium or in a higher velocity based on that uh, it has been classified so it means that if a rifling increases right the rifling increases there will be high velocity if there is less slicing uh, uh, less rifling or even lesser than that so it falls into medium category or even it falls under low category and uh, according to the use right and here civilian will have a handgun in position like pistols etc but a police may use a different uh, variety of guns and uh, wherein uh, it could be any other uh, rifles even uh, uh, pistols 
revolver or whatever and the military based on their uh, usage they have different varieties of guns it uh, includes right it includes wherein the civilian will have a uh, mostly a handgun for his personal safety or otherwise he has been involved in any hunting person uh, hunting uh, uh, etc then he may have a shotgun with him all right uh, rest of the uh, guns based on the on the part of the country he lives or the state where he lives the restrictions etc and the licensing etc will applicable so based on the classification as an undergraduate you should be able to know at least the point number 1 where uh, based on rifle based on the condition of barrel it is been divided into two that is most in most you need to remember and uh, followed by based on the manufacturing and uh, based on machine velocity what if you don't the answer is not issue but at least a condition of barrel you should know that there are two types of guns that are available and uh, followed by slide number 6 barrel rifle firearm is in turn again uh, divided into or subdivided into based on these and as a part of an undergraduate you need not know each and every factor of this uh, slide Uh, you need to just know the examples of all around right if you know the examples alone it is more than sufficient rifle firearm uh, means it has a rifle so the ex- most common example is pistols and followed by revolver and followed by a rifle if you know these three words uh, is more than sufficient for a rifle firearm and uh, for smooth bore for right? smooth bore is where in uh, there is no rifling at all zero rifling or uh, even lesser than that or only the terminal portion there are some modification even in smooth bore firearms and uh, here uh, as a aspect uh, wherein uh, there is uh, there are only less guns uh, wherein may be explained under smooth bore for an undergraduate but you need to know about paradox gun paradox gun is wherein where the terminal terminal end of the uh, barrel which has some degree of some uh, centimeters of rifling this is one of the uh, unique feature of a smooth bore uh, firearm where a gun shows a rifling and uh, based on the breech loading muzzle loading and the magazine loading etc the smooth bore firearms have been subdivided and uh, as an undergraduate you will not remember this and uh, sk- uh, skipping to next slide where injuries caused by rifle firearms we use the word gunshot wounds and uh, two types of words that we use so one is of entry wound and another is of an exit wound and a penetrating wound produced by a projectile that is a bullet in a rifle firearm over the body is called entry and the projectile is about to leave the body after entering it is called as exit wound right so points of importance is entry and exit right so in past in near past we have also used this word entry wound and exit wound when we have been studying elective fusion injury also so to avoid the confusion uh, whenever we write an autopsy report right so we use the word electric entry wound like that and uh, when uh, whenever we write the firearm autopsy we also use the word firearm entry wound exit wound like that in our description portion of our autopsy report so two terms entry wound and exit wound not necessarily all all weapon that has been striked or weapon been used will produce these two types of injury and there are some modification very vari- variation that occurs where only entry wound occurs or sometimes even a bullet just only has made an, a, a partial entry and has left the individual or just only by causing a superficial injury and uh, just like in a slap like uh, injury or otherwise due to um, the path uh, tra- traveled by the bullet is larger enough and if it been fired from a, a low velocity gun then in those cases exit wound may not be seen especially the word we
so whenever we talk about rifled firearm we use the we usually see both entry as well as exit two types of wounds are seen whenever we discuss or whenever we get a uh, case of shotgun injury in those cases there will be presence of only a entry wound because shotgun lacks rifling so the velocity by which a bullet leaves will be minimal and it is less likely to cause an exit wound and in rifling due to high velocity due to presence of rifling so two type of wound is more likely to occur in case of rifling and based on the part of the body and uh, based on the distance between the victim and the assailant all those also determine the entry and exit wound presence followed by the other words right other words that are being needed the terminologies like track of injury and followed by range of firearm as we discussed early the distance between the muzzle end of the firearm and the target or the victim this indicates a range of firearm and uh, followed by the path traveled by the projectile between the entry and the exit wound within the body is called as track of injury and uh, the other terminology and by this uh, simple schematic image where you can able to uh, make some dis description here where uh, exactly here where a bullet been loaded right bullet been loaded we call this end as a, a breach end breach end of the uh, firearm and this portion we call it as muscle end muscle end of a firearm and uh, followed by this is the victim right so this is the victim and bullet has entered bullet has exited so whatever the things that happen here those are called as track of injury the distance between the accused and the victim it it uh, it, it is been denoted denoted as the range of firearm the distance right and uh, followed by slide number where our most concern right our most concerns are with four types of firearm right and uh, revolver pistol rifle and shotgun firearm and out of first three they belong to rifle category rifle firearm and shotgun is an example of smooth bore firearm So most common weapons that have been used and most common where these weapons are being responsible for most of the firearm accidents uh, may, may accident homicidal event or even it could be a suicidal event where all these four are been most commonly responsible and same such when we have been discussing regarding organic irritant especially snakes where we also uh, use the word four big snakes like that same similar for here four are responsible uh, in the snakes were viper cobra king cobra and uh, crate those have been responsible and uh, even sea snakes have been the other snakes right so four snakes and uh, here same similar not the sea snake saw scale viper that, that could be the another one so these are the same four four bigs of uh, firearm four bigs of snakes and uh, followed by slide number 12 here coming to description towards a rifled firearm so here the word definition for rifling is one which has a spiral goose grooves rifling inside its barrel which imparts a spin to a bullet and a firearm uh, rifled firearms are more lethal it means that whenever it been at, uh, been used lethality or fatality that is been 100% more lethality and when you compare to a uh, smooth bore firearm it is relatively less here until otherwise the distance has been lesser uh, in the rest of the cases where rifle firearm are more lethal enough and the examples are these and uh, followed by this is the rifling right so here the same similar to our brain right uh, where in our brain we also have 
elevations and depressions we use the word sulky and gyre same similarly we use the word land for elevated portions lands are elevated portion grooves are different uh, depressed portions of the barrel so this is rifle so it could be in a clockwise wise uh, clockwise uh, in a portion or in anti clockwise in position so whenever a bullet been uh, whenever a trigger been pulled bullet pa passes through and due to presence of this rifling where it gives an a, a spin to a bullet which increases the velocity which increases the speed of the bullet and once it leaves the muzzle end of the firearm it travels for a greater distance without wobbling or without air shake and uh, the accuracy also increased and these are also advantages of rifling so here uh, as an undergraduate you should know the word land and grooves and uh, coming to importance of rifling here rifling marks to a particular weapon are unique same similar to our fingerprint that has been present on individuals hand and uh, here uh, uniqueness in means uh, this uniqueness are more towards in a uh, in a factory made uh, firearms where in uh, unorthodox preparation or a country made uh, preparations where they lack all these uh, kind of specification and when you come to point number 2 the importance of rifling marks may impart a, imparted on a bullet can help in identification of a weapon used in uh, the uh, offense where uh, offense object right by which uh, we can also fix out fix out the probable accused and the other detainee and uh, other advantages of uh, rifling as we discussed it gives steadiness stability to the bullet while traveling in air rifling also increases the power of penetration by the bullet prevents wobbling and or otherwise uh, shaking uh, followed by it increases the accuracy of the target aimed and uh, by this rifling where bullet can travel for a longer distance or a longer range and uh, these are advantages of rifling and uh, most uh, most expected by my question right what are advantages of a uh, rifling most frequently even asked question in during your viva sessions and uh, uh, coming to the next slide slide number 16 as we discussed earlier, whenever we talk about rifling, we come across two words, one is of land and one is of grooves. And the grooves are almost uh, commonest will be 6, again an MCQ, and followed by it can be anti-clockwise or anti-clockwise. And uh, wherein uh, the other uh, important part is uh, where bullets are made, been made from different objects wherein if it been made by lead where deeper growings are required uh, when you compare to a, a copper jacketed bullets and uh, followed by we also come across another word caliber right caliber is nothing but uh, the internal diameter of an rifled firearm uh, caliber is otherwise also called as gauge and this word is unique to rifled firearm and for uh, a smooth bore firearm it is something different in this presentation where we are more, more discussing towards a rifle firearm and the term caliber is again related to rifle firearm and here what we do is to measure a caliber we measure exactly two opposite lands have been taken into point of concentration and we measure this uh, distance between two opposite lands and this indicates the caliber and we also use the instrument called hexilometer uh, for measuring the caliber uh, or to determine the gauge of the fi firearm and uh, followed by lands are elevated portion grooves are depressed portions coming to slide number 18 where a condensed table column been given and uh, here we discuss about the various features between a revolver pistol rifle and a shotgun and here the point of importance is we're coming to this section called effective range and terminal range and here the rifle is relatively same there is no any differences between so here uh, when you take revolver and pistol it means that effective range is 
the fatality right fatality by which an individual could kill could, could be injured severely and a death inevitable death that happens here it is 100 meters but the terminal reach uh, the maximum distance it could uh, travel but the injuries are less likely less likely or less severe and where recovery is possible and when you compare these three columns as uh, a so column number two three four to column number five where in case of a shotgun where it is relatively lesser uh, where in, uh, the, the terminal effective ranges are only to 30 to 40 meter and the terminal uh, the effective range is 30 to 40 meter and the terminal range is only 50 meter so the fatality by shotgun is relatively less even if it been shot lesser than the distance the range between the victim and the accused has been lesser then it can be fatal enough but the distance as it increases it will cause only minor injuries wherein the individual can be saved if you've been shot by a shotgun firearm and followed by the lower section of the table where we come across the notable persons who have been shot by with these weapons in past and uh, firearm uh, most commonly uh, where in many documentary right the firearms and the presidents of the US where most of the presidents of the US have been shot by firearm and even our fa father of the nation was also shot by a firearm with a semi-automated pistol and a model of uh, 1934 and uh, followed by uh, slide number so coming to other two terminologies uh, in relation to firearm investigations and uh, due to presence of these markings we can be able to fix them uh, who is the suspected uh, who is the suspect and uh, suspect and uh, by uh, recovering the materials from him we can also fix the uh, essence of crime and we can also uh, use those evidences in process in uh, in process of trial and uh, here we use two terminologies one is of primary marking another is of secondary marking so primary marking it is purely related to a, a manufacturer manufacturer has some standardization so here number of rifling their width their depth so all guns that has been produced by the company for example you produce uh, the company produce only two guns we take it as name of the gun is a and the second gun has been b and uh, here the uniqueness of these two guns it will be similar because both have been unused right so once it has left the company based on the user end based on the user end and the habit of the user end the changes that occurs to a gun A and B by the user, right? Those are called as secondary markings. And here, to, uh, A and B, once it has left the company, they have this standardization, right? Uh, six rifling being present. Their width is of 0.3 mm, something like that. Their depth is of so and so. So, at the user end due to their usage the frequency of usage or their rough handling or their other process by which uh, the each parent has their uniqueness right and uh, here the most common uh, factors that affects the secondary markings are due to repeated wear and tear of a gun gun cleaning activities of a user metallic fouling and fingerprint of a gun right so all these terms right all one two and three all the all these three have been collectively termed as fingerprint of a gun so here the user end right at the user end for example the user a he is 100 percent prompt he has a patient to his gun he routinely cleans the gun after a usage but here in case B, he has allowed the gun and he has not used the gun properly and wear and tear has occurred and uh, he is a more frequent user compared to A and uh, A being patient to a gun 
so it takes all this cleaning activity properly but here in case b less of cleaning activity so repeated usage or on the next usage what happens both a and b have been charged of an offense so both of the two individuals have been asked to uh, report the station with their guns and uh, the forensic ballistics as well as a um, forensic expert as well as the police officer has examined the weapon and they have conducted this test bullet shot crime bullet shot etc etc those uh, those have been done but here the individual a who less 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 frequently use the weapon and due to his cleaning activity there is less metallic fouling present and a less of wear and tear of gun being present so the bullet that leaves the gun of a has less secondary markings but in scenario 2 where b is also been suspect in the list of suspect so less of cleaning activity and uh, he he is more he has a more usage of 100% so the wear and tear of a gun has been maximum so as the bullet passes through as the bullet passes through due to presence of metallic fouling or otherwise deformed portion of the barrel which causes some local injuries uh, local injuries over the bullet <coughs> so that it matches so it matches with the crime bullet the bullet that has been recovered from the scene of crime and as well as from the victim matches with the B individual so B individuals gun test bullet so by which there is a fixation of charge against B individual so these secondary markings are unique unique to the user end and uh, these primary markings are unique to the manufacturer or a company. So parts of three rifled, uh, rifled weapon and it is self explanatory and the cylinder has been used for storage of animation uh, ammunition in case of a revolver and uh, relatively short barrel uh, when you take the images on the top two where it has relatively less barrel so that is the reason why their effective range is relatively uh, lesser and it is a handgun it can be concealed in our part of our uh, belongings but in case of a rifle the uh, rifle yeah, another example for a rifle vera which has relatively high uh, a lengthy barrel so that is the reason we get for its effective range is the maximum and followed by it also had an, another term called butt and followed by breach is a portion wherein a bullet been um, uh, inserted and uh, uh, the muscle is the portion wherein bullet is about to leave the gun and uh, followed by slide wherein um, the extra focus being given to the breach end wherein breach and chamber chamber accommodates a cartridge and a tapper of a chamber and a percussion pin uh, this pin will be released when a trigger bit pulled right and all the following mechanisms that happens and the bullet travels and it leaves the muscle end and uh, followed these are again a, uh, a pistol coming to components of a cartridge the first and foremost terminology is the primer so primer are nothing but a shock sensitive explosive material or a mixture that ignites when it being striked mechanically and they, they are also called as a primary explosive so and it has been kept in a small metallic cup in a car, in a part of a cartridge so here this is a primary right primer primer is the first it initiates so this is the first thing that happens when a trigger been pulled and the following corresponding other events are more likely to occur after this and the composition it comes to five material five to six material as a part of it all these are been considered to be a component of a part of a cartridge and followed by coming to a second constituent of a cartridge is propellant and uh, propellant is nothing but the literally it could be a black powder or a smokeless powder 
or on a combination of two in variable amount. So these are considered as secondary explosive. It means that primer explodes first, primer initiates the process. And here this material, the propellant completely burns into, completely burns into, com by their burning, it will help the propel the ammunition, the remaining portion of the material, the remaining portion of the cartridge, which will be expelled from the muscle end, right? So primer is the primary explosive, it ignites and followed by this block the black powder or smokeless powder or of the combination uh, we use the word propellant it is a secondary explosive this burns and which will ejects the remaining portion of the ammunition towards the muscle end so it is a secondary explosives and uh, coming to the variable uh, modifications of a black powder smokeless powder and combination of the two where black powder constitute potassium nitrate of 75 percent and sulfur and charcoal and uh, the medical legal importance of this black powder is this black powder can travel up to 60 to 90 centimeter or more even right for a distance so this will be deposited on the part of the entry wound so or entry window exit window number differentiate under there presence of this black powder and other variable features other we will see see it in upcoming slide so if a black powder present deposition or presence is seen on a part of the wound we can come to a conclusion that could be the entry wound and followed by this smokeless powder in a variant right variant and it constitute nitrocellulose nitroglycerin nitrocellulose or double base or triple base wherein nitrogenidine is also a part right so it is a single base double base or a triple base so it is not necessarily a smokeless powder when you compare to a black powder less flame occurs less smoke occurs right and when you compare this smokeless powder and uh, this black powder smoke smokeless powder are having a capacity to burn completely complete the year in zero but here in the partial a conjo remnant we use the word fine grains have been present fine grains have been deposited how do you know fine grains are not on the area the material try to deposit them and uh, coming to this uh, other next portion of a cartridge is projectile right so the first word primer propellant and the next portion is projectile so here projectile it could be a bullet or a pellet and uh, the word bullet is been used uh, used only for a rifled firearm word pellet is used for smooth bore firearm number every uh, terms that are only classically related to rifle firearm and so the word bullet here it denotes a rifle firearm and here it is smooth bore firearm so based on the shape of the nose right shape of this nose the bullet can be divided into hollow point round nose spiry point wad cutter and semi wad cutter and here out of all right and uh, purely theoretical and uh, doesn't need any explanation but uh, here the point here wad cutter right wad cutter has some extra medical legal importance right so whenever a wad cutter being used it causes an extensive injury extensive injuries are more likely to occur with the help of with the usage of wad cutter right and uh, followed by other classification of a bullet it could be based on the shape of the heel and uh, according to the lethality and the constant of the material and according to the covering according to the forensic point of view and according to the special purposes and uh, here as an undergraduate you can uh, skip this portion 
according to the shape of the hill uh, no, no one remembers right no one remembers this section completely we can ignore at least two to three terms if you remember more than sufficient or even if you can't remember or not an issue but according to special purposes where each and every bullet has its own medical legal importance purposes and etc so it is wise to spend some more time to find out the detailing about these bullets and their importance and uh, coming to lethality where metallic bullets metallic metal bullets will be used against a, a, a criminal right uh, who is an offender uh, where they want to take him down right but to dispose a, a civilian crowd a mob right where we don't uh, shoot at our own citizen right so they use this plastic bullet or rubber bullet or wax or wooden bullet to disperse a mob or a gathering to set a piece on that particular area so it is for civilian dispersing a civilian mob and this is to take down a, a suspect or a criminal right and based on the covering it could be non jacketed or a jacketed jacketed total or partial and uh, coming to this forensic point of view where bullet could be the other terms is crime bullet and another is a test bullet so crime bullet is nothing but a bullet that has been recovered from the victim's body right the weapon that the bullet that has been responsible to cause a fatality that is called as crime bullet or other bullets that have been recovered from scene of crime they also use the word crime bullet the word test bullet is a suspected weak a suspected weapon been collected from the position of the accused where this fsl people and other ballistics examiners with the help of that suspect vehicle uh, su suspected weapon they try they do some try trial works to estimate the range and the effectiveness of the bullet so those bullets are called as test bullet right so the word crime bullet is different word test bullet is different right and uh, as i said early where according to special purposes you need to remember and extra work need to be done to look out the features of these bullets in particular and uh, out of all this fragile bullet wherein uh, it has some extra medical legal importance by which a confusion occurs right and uh, this will be dealt later in slide and uh, coming to other uh, portion of this presentation mushroom bullet or otherwise called as dum dum bullet and i can most commonly repeated by one machine and it is another example for semi jacketed bullets and uh, it expands like in a mushroom whenever it been impacted on the target to due to presence of a soft nose so it is a uh, other this is the portion only it is a partially jacketed so this portion alone it been jacketed this portion is some jacketed partially jacketed semi jacketed right so this nose portion belt belt on on the point of impact which causes an uh, which is been responsible for an extensive injury right and uh, more severe injury and more extensive injuries are more likely by usage of mushroom bullet or dum dum bullet and coming to this word fragile bullet and uh, here the point of importance is this bullet right this bullet is more likely to rightly to adu epdi anga nose portion la cover illanaala it tends to cause extensive injuries etc this fragile bullet whenever been impacted on the body or on the target site it tend to into break into multiple small pieces small pieces on point of impact it could be on the intervening object or it could be on the part of the victim body so what happens is this bullet uh, where medical officer subjects the individual for an x ray prior to autopsy it almost resembles like the accused has used a shotgun firearm yeah na bullet of most of the time it will remain as intact but only on this exception only of for this bullet alone 
where this bullet breaks into small multiple pieces adanal medical officer will be confused that here the accused has used a, a shotgun firearm obtained so here at the part of the autopsy the other most important part here is uh, he need to collect all broken fragments of this bullet from the body right so at the autopsy if it been of a bullet two rounds have been fired two bullets have been seen within the body so medical officer should collect two bullet more than sufficient if it been of a shotgun firearm medical officer at least he need to collect 10 to 15 pellets is more than sufficient right but in case of an fragable bullets where he need to collect all the distorted portion from the corpus so this is of significance towards this type of bullet and uh, again most frequently asked by the question and uh, most expected answer of points of medical legal importance is it resembles a shotgun firearm and all broken fragments of this bullet should be recovered from the corpus all right and uh, as just like as we said earlier where plastic bullets sort of some pvc made and uh, 10 cm long usually fired from a smooth bore weapon uh, effective up to 50 to 70 meter and uh, it is purely purely to disperse the air out or to control a mob and uh, not to kill the individual so at the end of this presentation the facts the things that we discussed are we have uh, seen about definition of a firearm followed by the the classification of firearm and the specification parts of each gun followed by the components of a cartridge and the classification in towards bullets and pellets we have seen and uh, and we also come across another word called caliber or gauge and in that we also discuss the word land and group so at this end of this presentation what you do is refer to a theory text where these materials will be dispersed at various places try to find out the sections and the read ones and then you come uh, if you have any doubt text us in whatsapp group or otherwise you can continue with part 2 video thank you